Good morning, folks. This is Deb Delapiana, and this is your short take. This is Friday. It's the 7th of July. And, you know, before I get into the meat of our discussion this morning, I just want to say that every day I wake up and I pinch myself because I cannot believe that we live in a nation where we think that people like Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Louis Gohmert, Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, Paul Gosa, Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, Josh Hawley are fit for public office. And that's just that's just a handful of them, okay? That's just a handful of them. But let me make one thing perfectly clear. The conservatives in this country are not now, nor have ever been in the majority. And the only time that the conservatives and the Republican Party wins an election is when the Democratic voters take the time off from voting. That is a fact, all right? We ended up with Donald Trump in 2016 because the Democrats did not show up at the polls. Those numbers have been statistically proven at this point. He lost the popular vote by a lot. We can't afford to do this again. Let me just say this. What is coming up in 2024 is not just another election cycle like back in the day when Al Gore was running or Bill Clinton or even before that. What is going on here in America has been in the works for a very long period of time. And it didn't just start with Donald Trump, but what Donald Trump was, was the gasoline on the fire. He was the man who pushed it right over the edge here. The election in 2024 is a choice between democracy and fascism. Is the Democratic Party perfect? No. And you know what? I'm sorry, folks, but the American people aren't perfect either. And there is going to be never a time when any party is perfect because human beings are involved and human beings have faults. They're greedy. They're self-absorbed. And you will always have to watch every party, no matter what. Let's let's grow up a little here, okay? This isn't utopia, okay? This is a place where we were told way, way back when this country was started that democracy is fragile and it's going to require the involvement of the American people to keep it honest. But we have gone full-on crazy here in America. We now have a presidential candidate who spends his time on the road, not talking about what he's going to do for the American people, but what he's going to do to pay back those who even dare to question whether or not he's committed crimes. He goes out there and he threatens Jack Smith, Jack Smith's wife, and anybody else he can. This is what he spends his time doing, continuing to spread the big lie that the election was stolen. We have Carrie Lake in Arizona, a full-on nut, who is still filing leg- litigation over whether or not she lost the Arizona governorship. She lost the Arizona governorship. But she's vying to be Donald Trump's running mate, along with a whole host of other people. There's Elise Stefanik, another whack job from New York. It could be Marjorie Taylor Greene, who, by the way, is now not right wing enough for the Freedom Caucus. They just booted her out. How's that one for you? Can they go any further right than they already are? Well, I think the answer is yes. And now we have another court ruling. And it's being handed down just in time for the 2024 election. So let me tell you all about this ruling because it's not the SCOTUS. A Trump appointed judge named Terry Doughty has ruled that the Biden administration cannot discuss with Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media outlet any propaganda that may be spread by conservatives on their sites. They are being threatened with federal imprisonment if they do so. Now, to be sure, the Biden administration is going to fight this all the way to the top. So this judge, by the way, 
is the same judge who spread lies about COVID-19 in order to, you know, rule against mask mandates and vaccine mandates. He's even went so far as to state without any actual scientific evidence or actually any evidence from any scientific organization that the vaccine did not stop the spread of the disease and that the COVID-19 virus itself was immune to the vaccine. And he also attacked Anthony Fauci for saying that hydroxychloroquine did not cure COVID-19. And he used that as his idea of proof that the Biden administration was lying to the people. This is the guy who handed down this ruling just before the 2024 election. Now, there is absolutely no doubt that in 2016 and again in 2020, that the Russians spread misinformation on social media, which was then picked up and amplified by crackheaded Trump cultists all over social media everywhere. And you can be sure that Vladimir Putin is salivating over this one because there is nothing he would like more than Donald Trump back in office. He certainly doesn't want Joe Biden there. There is only one candidate running in 2024 that is doing anything remotely positive for the American people, and that's Joe Biden. He has been doing it all along. He has fought the good fight against people trying to marginalize women, take away their body autonomy. He has fought for the LGBT community. He has fought for transgender Americans. He has fought for the American family by lowering prescription drug costs with the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, he is the man who pushed through COVID-19 relief while every Republican voted against it. He is now the owner of the greatest GDP of all the G7 nations. He has created jobs that even by any of the economic authority standards are outstanding. And yet the people ignore it. Instead, we talk about Donald Trump's roadshow night after night after night on, you know, on mainstream media. And in the meantime, we are ignoring the fact that Donald Trump published Barack Obama's address and that a man who has eluded capture by the authorities who participated in J6 headed toward Barack Obama's house with a full cache of weapons. No one did. Anyone see that on social uh, anywhere on, on the mainstream media? I didn't see it until I saw it in the Seattle Times. And I saw it in one other place, the Washington Post. But we can cover Donald Trump's vile commentary and retribution towards anyone who dare question him every single night of the week. We are at a very dangerous point in this country and taking time off from the voting booth is unacceptable. And I'm talking to Democratic Party voters right now. You want to know what Joe Biden has done for you? I will put the list in this video. This video, as it appears on YouTube, will, will have everything in there that you need to look at. If you choose not to look at it, I can't help you, okay? If you choose to be ignorant, I can't help you. I don't have time for that. I don't have any time for that any more than I do arguing with MAGA people on social media. They're lost to us, okay? Let them go. They're cultists. We don't need to bring them over to the Biden side. They're never going to vote for Joe Biden. I saw a guy in my store the other day walking through with a red, white, and blue fuck Joe Biden shirt on. Those people are mentally unarmed, okay? They are not worth discussing. They are not worth arguing with. There is no argument anymore. It's democracy or fascism. Democracy in its imperfect form, but in a form, or full-on, full-frontal fascism offered by the GOP. That's all they have. And by the way, the other presidential candidates on the Democratic Party side don't have anything to offer you either, but we'll talk about them in a separate video. In the meantime, I got to get ready for work and I will talk to you all later. Have a great day.